WCBI News at 6 starts now. Good evening, everyone, and thanks for joining us. I'm Tom Ebel, filling in all night for Selena Schaefer. Happy Market Street Festival weekend, everyone. If you were traveling into Columbus earlier today like I was, you may have ran into a few roadblocks and tons of foot traffic. It's been 22 years since the first downtown market downtown Columbus Market Street Festival, and since then the event has grown to an unimaginable size. WCBI's Victoria Bailey hit the streets and shows us the sights and sounds of the beloved tradition. The streets of downtown Columbus were flooded with hundreds of visitors Saturday as the annual Market Street Festival got underway. Beautiful day. We want everybody to come out and enjoy it with us. Barbara Bigelow is the executive director for Columbus Main Street. She says getting an event like this together requires all hands on deck. One great thing about Market Street is we have a core group of volunteers that continue to come back with us each year. They do the same uh, job each year, if you want to call it that, take care of the same activities for us. And it just makes it, I'm not going to say it's easy, but it makes it so much better for us. The festival had 225 arts and crafts vendors this year. Take a Seat LLC vendor Rebecca Aldridge says it's the hospitality that keeps her coming back each year. The people that were running the show are very well organized and very well put together and have been lovely to deal with. And that always takes a, a place in your heart, you know, when, when someone treats you well. And they do here, they, they watch out for their vendors and they keep you in constant contact. And so they just do a great job. Martha Griffiths and her family have been coming to the festival for five years now. Just the, being out with your family and coming to see. Your other people, you know, that you know and some that you don't know and the vendors, the different vendors that we like the car show. Like he said, we like to crank it up. <laughs> Bigelow says Market Street is something that she wants to continue to be a part of for many years to come. At Main Street, we want to involve all the families and things that we do. It is such a wonderful family-friendly event. It's wonderful to make preparations and to bring things like this to our community. And it's fun each year to come up with something different to try to let the whole community know that, that, that we want to include everybody. In Columbus, for WCBI News, I'm Victoria Bailey. When the Market Street Festival rolls around, it's the perfect chance to see the, and experience unique handmade art, food, and clothing. Four Corners is a local outreach ministry. The ministry partners with unfortunate northern Uganda women to make life beads. The women fashion jewelry out of paper. They create necklace, bracelets, and rings, and the ministry pays them a salary. The money is used to help the women pay for their children's education. The jewelry is brought back to the United States to be sold, and those proceeds go back into the Four Corners Ministry program. Robbie Triplett has been a part of the ministry for six years. She says she loves being a part of the ministry, not only to help the women, but to receive a blessing herself. We think that we're going over to minister to these ladies and to the people there in northern Uganda, and they have enriched our lives so much. Uh, this is a faith-based organization that, that loves the Lord and Jesus Christ, and we promote um, the, the gospel there, and they're very receptive, and they, they love the Lord. All these ladies do. And if you're interested in purchasing life beads or making a donation yourself, you can go visit fourcorner.org. Sammy, crank it up. Who did it? Sammy Smith cranked it up. He is the winner of the WCBI Crank It Up contest at Market Street. It took 116 tries, but Smith drove away with this year's Crank It Up vehicle, a beautiful 2004 Nissan Titan. The truck was updated by Bob's Paint and Auto Body, Miller's OK Tire, and Audio Advantage. The truck was provided by Columbus Nissan. And look at that weather out there, Jacob. It was an absolutely beautiful day for Market Street. Jacob joins us now for a first look. How's everything looking? It was, there? it was beautiful out there. I got to spend some time outside. I think you did too. I and did. I needed that sunscreen today as well, but uh, I got my seventh corn dog of the day as well here. Seventh corn so dog. It was uh, okay. quite a day to be outside. I hit the ice cream place twice as well. Really a beautiful day outside to see. Couldn't have warm. been better. And it still is beautiful right now as we take a look at our Alpha Insurance Sky Chem. We're at 76 right now in Columbus. Still got that breezy west wind there. We've been between 15 to 20 miles an hour today, and that's been hanging around uh, being quite stubborn. But we're going to have that wind die off as we head through the evening tonight. We'll have a calm northwest wind. It will be uh, clear and chilly. 
hopefully that wind, though, will finally go away. We're going to get down to about 50. A few of us may drop into the 40s. Coming up, we're going to talk about more sunshine in our area. Could be that sunscreen is well needed. Also going to get some rain late uh, next week here, and then uh, even looking further, another nice weekend coming for us. We're going to have a lot to talk about. Thank you, Jacob. You left your corn dog up here. It might have been a bad mistake. Columbus wasn't the only, fest or only city holding an outdoor festival in today's beautiful weather. An iconic Tupelo tradition was celebrated today. WCBI's Chad Groening was at Duty Burger Festival and has that story. There was a very long line. This is where it began. Why did all these folks descend on the Orrin Dunn Museum? To sample a vintage Duty Burger, which for many years was sold at Duty's Diner. Duty's Diner is just an example of one of the iconic pieces of history that we're trying to preserve at the Orrin Dunn City Museum. Anybody and everybody who's lived in Tupelo and is over 50 years old remembers going and eating at Duty's Diner, which was downtown. And it was actually fashioned after World War II rationing, where they would extend the meat with flour and water which behind me is exactly what they're doing. They're cooking the duty burgers exactly like duty Christian cooked them in his trolley car that was turned into the diner. Tim Gillespie is a longtime Tupelo resident who volunteered for this weekend's event. He remembers eating at duty's diner as a kid. Well, so here's the counter. Uh, they had soups in the wall in the window there. They had car hops. Uh, they served a great burger. Served a good hamburger steak and also served breakfast in the mornings. For many years, Duty's Diner was the showplace of Tupelo, where young and old alike could gather to socialize and grab a bite to eat. Unfortunately, something happened that relegated it to the annals of Tupelo history. McDonald's and Wendy's and, you know, came in and put them out. You know, that's what hurt them. But the owner of Duty's would be happy to see the long line of people, many of whom weren't even alive when Duty's was open. I kind of like the hamburger, so I decided to come out and try one. I like, I like the old style, dough burger style kind of hamburgers. And what is it about the duty burger that's special? My dad used to work at Duty's Diner when he was younger. This is his first job. And that's all about I know. <laughs> Guest says she was truly amazed at the size of the crowd at this year's Duty Burger Festival. Chad Groening, WCBI News, Tupelo. Organizers believe this year's event could be one of the biggest ever. Tupelo hotels and restaurants are booming with business this weekend. The 15th annual Blue Suede Cruise is in full swing with close to 1,000 vintage antique cars on display. The car owners have come from 17 states and even Canada to participate in this year's event. Last year's event was selected as Mississippi's Small Festival of the Year. Event director Alan McDaniel says Tupelo is an ideal location to show off the old school rides. Automobiles and, and rock and roll, they seem like they kind of go hand in hand. I think we all had favorite music and we had favorite cars. And uh, Tupelo being the birthplace of Elvis Presley and, and the king of rock and roll, it just sort of lends itself to being a spot where people can come and enjoy the old cars, enjoy the music. And uh, it just kind of takes folks back to, a, I guess, a simpler, more uh, enjoyable time in their lives. Vintage cars were also on display inside the Bancor South Arena, including a 1957 Chevy, one of the most fabled cars in history. The Blue Suede Cruise will wrap up on Sunday. McDaniel says they expect to bring in a half a million, half a million in tourist dollars this weekend. Coming up, an iconic local shop is vandalized overnight. We'll have that story and an update to the Houston fire when WCBI News comes back. Welcome back and thanks for sticking with us. Tupelo police are looking for suspects in the overnight vandalism of a landmark Tupelo restaurant. Workers at the Dairy Cream on East Main Street arrived this morning to find the signature glass windows of the restaurants smashed. Work crews acted throughout the day to replace the window and keep the restaurant running. Anyone with information is asked to contact Crime Stoppers of Northeast Mississippi at 1-800-773-TIPS. Crews were able to distinguish any and all smoke and fire from Friday's factory fire in Houston. After an entire day of battling the fire and receiving assistance from multiple agencies, the, se the, seven is now or the fire is now controlled. An old textile plant storing 2.2 million pounds of polyfoam ignited yesterday and caused major concerns and air tox 
toxi toxicity, the Department of Environmental Quality came out to run tests on the impact the smoke had on the community. The results of those tests are not in yet, but crews from the department will be in Houston throughout the weekend. The controversial American Health Care Act, the Republican replacement for the Affordable Care Act, passed the House this week in a narrow margin of 217 to 213. It's expected to go before the Senate for review, but many are skeptical it will pass. Errol Barnett has the story. On Thursday, the House voted to repeal one of the worst job-killing laws of all. It's called Obamacare. Perhaps you've heard of it. The bill is passed, and without objection, the motion to reconsider is laid upon the table. The celebration was sweet but short for the president and GOP House members who because passed the American Health Care Act. After a rose garden ceremony, Mr. Trump left Washington, and the House began its week-long break. That leaves the bill in the hands of a skeptical Senate. There, the bill's path is expected to be rocky. The total cost of the House bill is still unknown, and a working group of 13 senators, all men, has already been formed to make changes. White House spokeswoman Sarah Huckabee Sanders said the president will not rush the Senate. Again, this is a process. We haven't put a timeline or a deadline. We want to get it right, not get it fast, and that's the, that's the focus. One big issue for the Senate, the GOP plan includes sweeping changes to Medicaid. It would put caps on Medicaid funding starting in 2020 and stop payments to Obamacare's expansion of Medicaid to people just above the poverty line. This would leave the 31 states and the District of Columbia that participated in the Medicaid expansion to fund the coverage themselves, cut benefits, or cut enrollment. President Trump is also drawn criticism for this comment made Thursday while meeting with Australian Prime Minister Malcolm Turnbull in New York. I shouldn't say this to our great gentleman and my friend from Australia because you have better health care than we do. Trump repeated his admiration on Twitter Friday, writing, of course the Australians have better health care than we do. Everybody does. Now back to the Senate. The Republican majority body could pass its version of health care reform without any support from Democrats through a process called reconciliation. But that process will take time as all of the details are ironed out and as many Republican senators envision major changes of their own. Errol Barnett, CBS News, Branchburg, New Jersey. Believe it or not, in the first look, Tom took a bite of my corn dog. Can't believe it. Temperatures right now are still comfortable out there. We're in the 70s. Come up, we'll talk, coming up, we'll talk about the warmth and our chance of rain next week. Your first alert weather forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. What a beautiful day we had. Here's our Columbus Skycam showing everyone out enjoying the sunshine and warm weather at Market Street Festival. Absolutely beautiful day to spend here in downtown Columbus or anywhere across our area. We had a viewer send us in a picture here of some snow. Here's a picture from Gatlinburg. Now I know April Fools, I told you we had snow here. This is real. Richard sent this in from Mount Leconte in Gatlinburg, Tennessee here. They had four inches of snow last night. Here you can see on radar, look at these light colors in here right along that border there, the Tennessee-North Carolina border. Got a quick, quick uh, overnight snow last night. Thankfully, we don't have to get any of that snow. That cold air is off and away from us. We're in the warm air, and we're going to stay there. 76 in Columbus right now, 79 in Shreveport. It's almost hot out in Dallas. They're at 87. We're going to get our share of that warmth in the weekend, but tonight will be absolutely gorgeous out there. 72 by 7 p.m. after the newscast. By 9, we'll drop into the 60s, and we'll be on our way into the low 50s tonight with clear skies. Tupelo, we're going to drop down to 51. Boonville, 50. We may get a 40 on the board there, here and there, but I think most of us are going to stay in those 50s. West Alabama as well. We see 50 in Fayette and in Vernon. Now we're going to really enjoy this weather while we can because we're going to be looking at some sunshine tomorrow as well. 78 in Columbus.